Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to create a histogram. And we're going to look at a few of them um, to see just how they work. So, here are a few of them. Here's one. And um, what you'll usually get on a test, quiz, or some sort of a assignment is you'll be given uh, the data in a table form on the left there. And it's always good to understand what you're uh, dealing with here. So this says the number of times people have gone to the zoo. And so on the left side, it shows from 0 to 5 times, from 6 to 10, from 11 to 15. And then on the right, um, it shows how many people in the survey fit into that category. Okay. So um, the first one, we have the people who only went 0 to 5 times. There were five of them. And so we're going to create a bar that goes all the way up to 5 above that 0 to 5 category. Then we have 6 to 10. We have two of them. So we put a bar next to there. And then 11 to 15, we have three of them. And so we put our bar up there. 16 to 20, we have zero. And so nothing goes there. And so we have the 21 to 25, which is four. And so we put it up there. And so for the 16 to 20, there's just, you don't put a bar there. There's nothing, uh, there aren't any people in that category. Now, um, I want you to look down at the bottom at these categories. We actually call these buckets. If you were to take, let's say, a bucket of, or a, a big container of change and, and put the different coins into different buckets, that's kind of what this is. And uh, these categories are all equal um, intervals. Right? This one happens to go by 5, 0 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15. And you can go by any um, interval that you want. You could go by 10s, 20s, you could go by 3s. It just depends on your data. Now this histogram um, has to do with the ages of people at a family reunion. And so you'll see on the, the left, we've got 0 to 10, 4. But before we look at that, I want you to look at the y-axis there. And these aren't going by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going by 2s. And so always pay attention to the numbers on the left so that you know you're putting the correct uh, uh, bar in there. So 0 to 10, we have 4 people. So we make sure we go to 4. 11 to 20, we have 8. So we have that bar. 21 to 30, we have 2. So we put there. 31 to 40, there's 10. So that goes all the way up to the 10. And then 41 to 50 is 6, and we go to 6. Another thing I want you to notice is how the bars are next to each other. They're snug next to each other. There's no space in between them. You want to be very careful. Don't put any space between them, because this is a number line. And so those bars need to cover the entire interval. Okay, so they should always be next to each other touching. Now, sometimes you're just given a list of numbers. Now, this, these numbers right here, uh, are luckily they're in order. Um, you don't always get them in order. And this is uh, scores from a 50-point test, and it shows the number of people, that got these tests and then their score categories. And this one goes 0 to 10, 11 to 20. So it goes by tens. So what you're going to want to do is you could either create a little table on the side or you could uh, very carefully uh, find the how many people there were in each category. So from 0 to 10, we have an 8 and a 9. So there's two people that scored from 0 to 10. So we put our bar there. 11 to 20. There's three of them, and so we're going to put a bar there. From 21 to 30, there's two, so we put our bar. From 31 to 40, we have five of them, so that goes all the way up to the top. And then the 41 to 50, we have four of them in that bucket, and so we put it up to the four. Okay. Now, sometimes the numbers are not in order. And so um, I'll give you a few suggestions on this. 
uh, you might want to put them in order uh, to help you out. You might want to make a table and just check them off as you tally in each category. Um, and you can see that it's going by 20, 0 to 20, 21 to 40, 41 to 60. Um, some people just try to find the ones in the category. And so I'm going to do that right now. Um, but you have to be very careful that you don't miss anything. So from 0 to 20, we've got, sorry, it was a 100-point quiz. Uh, we have only one who's from 0 to 20. And so we put a bar up to 1. Now the 21 to 40 bucket, we've got one, two, and three. Okay. All right. Now I have the luxury of having these circles disappear on each one. Um, and sometimes when you're counting them, you might want to put a circle around one category, a box around another, a triangle around another, something to where you can uh, keep track that you've already used these numbers. From 41 to 60, we've got 1, 2, 3. Okay, there's three of them. And then from 61 to 80, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we put our bar up to 4. And then 81 to 100, we've got 1, 2, 3 of them. Now, before you're done with this one, count how many numbers there are, and then count how many numbers you've done in the bars. So like on the, if you're looking at the bars, 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3, make sure they match the numbers so you didn't miss any. Okay? All right, now let's say you're creating uh, one of these from scratch, meaning that you're just given the numbers and you're told to create the actual graph. Um, what you're going to have to do is uh, be very careful when you make the buckets, right, the categories. And teachers, you might want to uh, listen to this as well. Um, have your students uh, or give them a specific number of buckets that you want because every uh, uh, data is different. And so, you know, it depends on what numbers you have and how many of them and what they look like. Some Sometimes a histogram of four buckets would work. Sometimes a histogram of a hundred, of, sorry, of 10 buckets would work. It just all depends. I often tell my students uh, do four or five buckets because if you just let them choose, they'll pick one bucket and put all of them in there. So that's just a little hint from there. Make sure you label both your X and your Y axis and you number them. And so that whoever's looking at your histogram knows exactly what it, what it means and is helpful to them. Okay, now um, we talked about the buckets, and I think you guys are going to do great. So uh, I hope you got a little bit uh, more understanding about histograms. And uh, if you need to watch this video again, I understand there was a lot going on here. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.